Samiti leaders found a ready response in the hearts of the affected people when they decided to fight the 1957 general elections on the issue of merger with Maharashtra. Kanapur Taluka, with a 57.9% Marathi-speaking population, returned Nilkant Sardesai with 26,401 votes. Parshuram Nandihali won 22,179 votes from Belgaum. Nandihali continues to represent Belgaum in the Mysore Assembly. In the very first general elections after the state's reorganization, B.R. Sutankar was returned to the Mysore Assembly from Belgaum on the Samiti's ticket. B.P. Kadam was returned from Karwar. In the border areas of Nipani, Palki and Hulsur, the Maharashtra Ekikaran Samiti also defeated the candidates of the ruling Congress party in Mysore, although it was ruling. This verdict of the people was the most convincing answer to Mr. Nijalingappa, who said earlier that he doubted whether the people of the Marathi-speaking areas wanted to go to the erstwhile Bombay state. In 1958, people from the border areas joined the Mammoth Morcha that demonstrated outside parliament and reasserted the demand for unification. Mr. Yeshwantra Chauhan, then chief minister of Bombay, had made it clear that Maharashtra was ready for a reciprocal transfer of Canada-speaking areas to Mysore. To press their demand more forcefully, the people of the border areas started an agitation which involved non-payment of agricultural revenue. A large number of villages took part in the agitation. The Mysore government adopted repressive measures against the intrepid farmers. There were lati charges in Belgaum and firings in other rural areas affected by the agitation. These are some of the Satyagrahis who braved these atrocities. Here you see Lakshmi Bai Nagapa Hosur, whose husband was killed in the firing at Yellur, following the non-pavement of revenue. <laughs> The Taluka board elections which followed the agitation were also overwhelmingly by the supporters of unification with Maharashtra. When in November 1964, Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri visited Bombay, he said to the leaders of the border areas, when you have waited for eight long years, I would request you to wait for only eight months more. In July 1965, the Bangalore session of the All India Congress Committee passed a unanimous resolution urging the government to set up appropriate machinery for a speedy and final settlement of the dispute. At the Bombay AICC session in 1966, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi persuaded Senapati Bapat to give up his fast unto death. He was assured that a commission would be set up to go into the border dispute between Maharashtra and Mysore. And now we begin yet another chapter in the exercise of reversal of historical and geographical evidence and the blatant rejection of a democratic verdict. We speak of the report of the one-man commission comprising Mr. Mer Chand Mahajan, former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. The late Mr. Mahajan gives up any pretense of being rational by declaring that Consistency, however, is a virtue that cannot be insisted in matters political. A convenient smokescreen for the multiple inconsistencies which make up his recommendations. Now back to Belgaum. The Mahajan Commission report arbitrarily divides Belgaum's population into just two categories, Marathi-speaking and non-Marathi. 
In effect, the Konkani, Tamil and Urdu-speaking populations are included in the Kannada section, thereby opposing their inclusion in Maharashtra. And this despite the fact that members of these minority groups had told the Commission otherwise. Even when some of them favoured the status quo, they did not necessarily represent their language or community groups. This is especially true of the Urdu-speaking population, which is represented only in religious institutions. The Commission's contention that this population numbers no more than 25,000 has no basis. The Marathi language pervades the entire administrative, educational and cultural structure of Belgaum. As early as 1926, the Belga municipality passed a resolution suggesting that the minutes of the proceedings of the General Committee be kept in Marathi and English. And so are the minutes kept to this very day. Here you see circulars of the Belga Municipal Servants Cooperative Credit Society. They are in Marathi. Here is an Octroi department form in Marathi. This railway overbridge signboard is in Marathi and English. Here is a popular theatre for Marathi plays. An advertisement for the Marathi play Gopichand, staged in Belgaum, is dated 1906. These cinema hoardings are in Marathi and Hindi. The signboard of the Belgaum Pioneer Urban Cooperative Bank is in Marathi. The Talkwari Club of the Marathi-speaking people founded in 1927. On the walls of the Neminath Digambar Jain Mandir, you see inscriptions in Marathi. Strongly rooted linguistic tradition brings all religions together and the language used is Marathi. Lettering in Marathi and English graces the Belgaum Municipality Bridge built in 1890. We can go back still further. Here's a page from Karnatak Mitra, a Marathi weekly published from Belgaum in 1867. The balance sheet and report of the Belgaum Muslim Cooperative Bank is printed in Marathi not in Urdu or Kannada. In the face of all this incontrovertible evidence, the Mahajan Commission perversely recommends that Belgaum City should be retained in Mysore state. Not only that, but even the seven Marathi-speaking villages should also be joined to Belgaum to make way for the city's expansion. The shaded areas in the map show the surrounding villages of Belgaum Rural, Madhapur, Angol, Vardgaon, Dhamne, Mazgaon, and Pirnawadi, which includes Chaitanmal. We now move on to Khanapur Taluka. Out of the 206 villages, with 80.6% Marathi-speaking population, claimed by Maharashtra, Mr. Mahajan hands over 50 villages to Mysore, despite the Marathi-speaking population of these 50 villages being 86.3%. He argues that, along with 54 Kannada majority villages, these 50 villages make a compact area. Actually, these two respective groups of Kannada and Marathi villages form two wings or two tracts on either side of the taluka. They are separated by 152 villages recommended for inclusion in Maharashtra. One can decide for oneself whether these 50 Marathi-speaking villages form a compact block with the 152 Marathi-speaking villages recommended for transfer to Maharashtra or with the 54 Kannada villages not claimed by Maharashtra. Gharli, the village which joins these two divisions, is a 100% Marathi-speaking village. Mr. Mahajan also calls these 50 Marathi-speaking villages small population villages in forest areas. Disregarding principles of linguistic homogeneity, 
he goes on to declare that it is not the purpose of this commission to transfer forest areas from one state to another as if human beings are less important than trees. This jungle tract in Kanapur Taluka has been destroyed by the Mysore government. This means that were the jungle tract to be merged with Maharashtra, the state could not take full advantage of its natural wealth. This list of members eligible for election to the district local board Kanapur, prepared by the collector and dated 12th April 1884, is in Marathi. The collector's signature is in the Modi script, used for writing Marathi for many centuries. The Marathi Vidya Mandir in the village of Halsi in Kanapur Taluka represents a long historical tradition of Marathi education in the Taluka. But the Mysore government seems to have neither goodwill nor money to spare for Marathi education. Witness the utter neglect of this Marathi medium government school housed in a derelict structure. Nagargali is yet another Marathi speaking village in Kanapur Taluka. The Gram Panchayat office board is in Marathi. The imprint of Marathi is obviously evident in every aspect of life in Kanapur's villages. This, however, obviously did not provide sufficient evidence for Mr. Mahajan to consider the claims of Maharashtra. We move on to Karwar, a seaside town blessed by nature's bounty. The fishermen and fisherwomen are dressed like their counterparts in Maharashtra, not Mysore. This is the river Kali at Karwar. A bridge is urgently required here, and yet since 1963, the Mysore government has shelved the plan for a river bridge for precisely the same reason that it has uprooted the forest wealth of Kanapur. In spite of tribulation, the Marathi language and culture are the very breath of life to the people of Karwar. As we enter Karwar, this board of the Oktrai Naka at Kodibad is in Marathi, not in Kannada. Marathi, not Kannada plays flourish in Karwar. Here's proof the hoarding for a popular Marathi play. The Mahila Mandal in Karwar was established in 1939. In 1946, the Karnatak Mahila Parishad held in Karwar demanded the merger of Karwar with Maharashtra. Here is a practical and convincing demonstration of the very close links between Konkani and Marathi. On the blackboard are written First Marathi, and then the Konkani versions of popular phrases. Their similar sounds prove, beyond the shadow of a doubt, the close relationship that exists between Konkani and Marathi. Contrast them with the totally alien sounds of the Kannada versions of the same phrases. Here is a marriage invitation dated 14th March 1930 in Marathi. A document of adoption used in the case of Mr. Anandrao Nadkarni, a well-known leader of Karwar. It's dated 1912 and is in Marathi. The Marathi weekly, Vichari. You see an issue of it printed by the Mohammedan press in 1898. The weekly continued to be published for 66 years. Further evidence of the fact that Konkani is akin to Marathi. A letter from Suniti Kumar Chatterjee, the reputed Indian philologist. As early as 1926, the Konkani-speaking people of Karwar had demanded more Marathi medium schools. In 1950, the people of Karwar had made a representation to the Bombay government demanding that the language of the administration in Karwar, Supa and Halyal Talukas should be Marathi. The Sri Sita Rameshwar Mandir has a board in Marathi. The notice board of the Sri Satya Sai Seva Samiti in Karwa is in Marathi. In the same temple hang portraits of Ahilya Devi Holkar, the Indore Maharani, Ramdas and Tukaram the Marathi saint poets, and Shivaji, the greatest hero of the Maharashtrians. Even the board of the Mysore Battalion of the NCC in Karwar is in Devanagari. 
The script is not used by the Kanadikas. Marathi has been part and parcel of the business world in Karwar. The Karwar Urban Cooperative Bank, established in 1912, published its 56th annual report and statement of accounts in Marathi, not in Kannada, or for that matter, English. An arms license issued in Karwar. The form is printed in Marathi. We now come to Bidar district. In the 1957 general elections, both seats in the Bhalki constituency were won by an overwhelming majority by the Samyukt Maharashtra Samiti. In the Hulsur constituency, the Samiti's candidate defeated the candidate jointly sponsored by the Congress and the Karnatak Ikikaran Samiti with a majority of 46,000 votes. In the Gram Panchayat elections of 1959, the Samiti won majorities in 42 out of 64 Gram Panchayats. In the Taluka Board elections of 1960, the Samiti won 11 out of 19 seats in Bhalki Taluka and 11 out of 15 seats in Sandpur Taluka. After the state's reorganization, all the three Talukas have expressed their desire for merger with Maharashtra through the democratic will of the people. The 146 villages claimed by Maharashtra have a Marathi complexion. But Mr. Mahajan blandly stated that these four talukas in their entirety should be included in Mysore in order to give Bidar the status of a district. He also recorded, I hold that the demand of the state of Maharashtra cannot be allowed merely on the principle of linguistic homogeneity. The fallacy in this argument is obvious. Bidar can still retain the status of a district even after the inclusion of 146 villages in Maharashtra. 60% of the people in these villages speak Marathi. Mr. Mahajan was more concerned about its minority of 40%. According to his own criterion of a tract comprising a population of 20,000, these 146 villages with a 60% Marathi-speaking population, qualify for merger with Maharashtra. In the village of Dongargaon, the Gram Panchayat meets in the open, while the school uses the small premises of the village headquarters. These are signs of economic backwardness, which, along with a dearth of water, electricity and sanitation, characterize the Marathi areas in present-day Mysore. In the village temple of Ekamba, dedicated to Shankar, a Marathi bhajan true to Maharashtra's Varkari cult is in progress. Here is an important Marathi medium school in Hulsur, Bidar district. It has already expressed its democratic verdict in Maharashtra's favor. In the village Lachangaon, in Bidar district, this Muslim boy, Ramzan, speaks fluent Marathi and does his schooling in Marathi. The village of Ladwanti, in Bidar district, is the birthplace of the revered Manik Prabhu, the great saint of the Datta cult. This fact is celebrated with a centuries-old inscription in Marathi. From Arant Taluka of Gulbarga district, seven villages had been claimed by Maharashtra. This government school in Aland village uses the Marathi medium. This appeal was issued by Babura Deshmukh during elections to the board of the Santpur Taluka Land Development Bank. It is in Hindi, not in Kannada.
an election poster issued by Manik Rao Patil, now ex-deputy Home Minister, Mysore Government, for elections in Bida. It is in Hindi and not in Kannada. A signboard of the Basavesh for Arts College is in Marathi. Here are also Marathi signboards in the main market area in Bhalki. A board on the Sholapur Hyderabad Road at Chandkapur. It was formerly in the Nizam's territory and is in English, Urdu and Marathi. There's none in Kannada. In short, the villages of Bidar district, claimed by Maharashtra, are stand for the Marathi entity. Mr. Mahajan submitted a memorandum to the Punjab Boundary Commission, also known as the Radcliffe Commission. It was appointed in connection with the partition of the Punjab and stated that in case the commission decided to proceed on the theory of units, the only real unit was the village. Yet he forgot his own conviction when it came to the Maharashtra Mysore boundary dispute. The Maharashtra chief minister, speaking to newsmen in Pune in July 1970, emphasized the point that the border problem is a human problem emerging from the formation of linguistic states. He added, there was no question of expansionism on the part of Maharashtra. For I could only hold, he said, that certain territories should come to Maharashtra, but also that some areas should go to Mysore. Mr. Naik was only stating the oft-repeated views of the Maharashtra government. The Maharashtra state legislature in its session held at Nagpur passed a unanimous resolution on December 16, 1970. The resolution appealed to the Union government, as well as to all political parties in Parliament, to settle without further delay the long-standing dispute over the boundaries between Maharashtra and Mysore. The Chief Minister of Maharashtra stated that Maharashtra's stand on the issue has always been that linguistic minorities in the border areas should be brought down to the irreducible minimum. By doing so, the people will be able to participate in the administration of the respective unilingual states. This is essentially a human problem and will have to be solved in accordance with the wishes of the people. When the Mahajan Commission's report was published, there was a general feeling that its recommendations might be accepted. But, said Mr. Nike, whomsoever I met, never suggested that the report was acceptable on merits. On the contrary, they all agreed that this is a human problem and it would be improper on the part of anyone to create difficulties in its solution by raising technical issues. He continued, we have all along stressed the need to settle this issue in a manner that would ensure justice to both the Marathi and the Kannad speaking people living in the boundary areas. We have also indicated the principles on which this could be done. If there are any other principles or methods which could ensure justice to them, we are not opposed to accepting them. We have never insisted that it should be settled only on the principles suggested by us. What matters is that these people must get justice. Our consistent stand has been that an insurance has been given to these people, that their problems will be solved in a just and fair manner, and that this assurance must be fulfilled. The principles and methods to be adopted for this purpose may be decided by the leaders charged with the responsibility to settle the issue. We are conscious of the hardships these people have been undergoing. It is no use trying to search for a method that might please the people of both the states. It will not lead to a just and final solution of the problem. Mr. Naik remarked, what has been causing anxiety and concern to the members of this legislature and to the people of the state is that the solemn assurance given to the people of the boundary areas by the national leadership and the union government was not being redeemed. It will be detrimental to national interests, Mr. Naik believed, to dismiss it as a minor problem. There is a deep-rooted feeling among the people of the state that a solution of this problem is being delayed because of political considerations. It is not in the interests of democracy to allow such a feeling to prevail. 
the people must be convinced that all issues are considered by the government and parliament purely on their merits and that through democratic processes justice can always be had. It is therefore a national issue and its solution must be attempted in a broad national perspective. It is our firm belief and confidence that all members of parliament have sincere faith in democracy. They have pledged themselves as members of parliament to uphold democracy. It is up to them to keep alive the people's faith in democracy. It will be unfortunate if the people gain the impression that it is not possible to obtain justice through parliament and resort to undesirable methods.